Hi friends, so continuing with this integrated video series, now today I am with Dr. Neha and we will be discussing a very important topic specifically for the AIMS exam, keratococavernous fistula. In the last few years, we have seen lot of questions on a keratococavernous fistula. So today we are going to discuss that what will be the clinical presentation, what are the radiological features and how the management of the keratococavernous fistula should be done. So Dr. Neha, uh, what what comes to your mind when you think about the keratococavernous fistula in a particular patient? Uh, yes, because it's an important topic. So basically, I will start with the anatomy so that you can understand how will it, the patient present. So as you know, keratococavernous fistula, fistula means that there is actually the arterialization of this venous sinus. And so therefore, you will get an increased venous pressure, not only in the sinus, but also the structures which are draining inside. Now the structures which are draining inside, very important, the center one is the internal carotid artery along with the sixth nerve. And then we have the lateral wall. The lateral wall gives pa passage to the third nerve, fourth nerve, and the first and second division of the fifth nerve. So that is why whenever we have the arterialization of these vessels, what is happening? You are getting the increased episcleral venous pressure. That is why the first important thing that you will get is the pulsatile proptosis. Why I am saying proptosis? Sometimes books will also say exophthalmos, but basically I want to reserve the term exophthalmos for the thyroid ophthalmopathy. So that is why pulsatile proptosis, this is the keyword. So whenever you get a question on the pulsatile proptosis, the first thing that you should think about is the keratococavernous yeah, I fistula. I think AIMS, AIMS is like this only, yes. that there are some specific words that they write. Yes, you okay. have to pick up those words. So that means the moment we are getting this word, now mark this word friends, pulsatile exophthalmos. Because see, it is pulsatile, that means some arterial pressure is definitely is gonna coming. So the moment the first answer that comes to your mind is pulsatile in, in pulsatile exophthalmos is keratococavernous fistula. What are the other features? One you said is a pulsatile exophthalmos. Yes. What could be the other features uh, which will be mentioned in the in the MCQ uh, in this particular case? Yes, uh, for that you should remember the classical triad. If they are specifically asking about this fistula, I must say that there should be chemosis along with the brew also in the question so that you are left with no other option that yes, it is a case of this fistula only that is called as a dandy's triad where you will get the pulsatile proptosis along with chemosis and along with the brew. And chemosis, remember, it is actually the edema of the conjunctiva. So don't call it as conjunctival chemosis. Okay. So it's basically pulsatile exophthalmos or pulsatile proptosis. Yes. Then chemosis, chemosis and uh, brew. Brew. So yes. basically PCB. PCB. So you can say. Yes. So no medical student can forget, can forget PCB. Yes, exactly. As a physics, chemistry, bio. Okay. Yes. So it's pulsatile exophthalmos or proptosis, as she rightly said. Let's use the word proptosis. Then chemosis and then brew. If you see this classical triad, which I've been now, you may get this MCQ in paper like need that which of the following is not a component of Dandy's triad. Yes, exactly. Okay, so all, this could except be a question. Question. all except all question. except question. Yeah. Yes, you can okay. get this. So please remember it is PCB, physics, chemistry, bio, pulsatile proptosis, chemosis, and brewing. Okay. Then uh, apart from this, anything else that you do in an ophthalmological part for the pulsatile or this? Keratococavernous fistula? Uh, yes, uh, the ophthalmoplegia is a very important part because so many cranial nerves, cavernous sinus is actually hub of cranial nerves and that is why all the cranial nerve palsies can be uh, affected here and because these nerves are actually supplying the extraocular muscles also, that is why ocular motility defects are very common in these fistulas, especially the lateral rectus because the sixth nerve as you know, it is passing through the center through the substance of the cavernous sinus, so it is basically the first nerve. So diplopia again in the lateral gaze, that is again a very important feature of this keratococavernous fistula. Okay. So Dr. Neha, when you are examining this patient, do you have any differential for that for, for, for which you need our help or yes. there is no differential? No, differential is there because cavernous sinus thrombosis itself yeah. can present with diplopia yeah, in the so lateral So the basic gaze. differential that an ophthalmologist is considering this particular case is a cavernous sinus thrombosis. thrombosis. Okay. Yes. But I think the, in a cavernous sinus thrombosis, will the patient will have a pulsatile exophthalmos or proptosis? No. no but no. there might be a proptosis, yes. but will not be a pulsatile. So that means the moment examiner is giving you this pulsatile word, that means they are taking you away from a cavernous sinus thrombosis. Rest everything can be present, can be present. in a cavernous sinus thrombosis also. And that is also very commonly asked topic in the paper. Yes, okay. exactly. So pulsatile word is a key over here. Okay. Then... Uh, 
what what else what else actually the other things is the visual uh, in, involvement because the vision is very much affected it is not that much involved in the cavernous sinus thrombosis because the optic nerve involvement is very rare there but here especially in cases of the direct fistulas direct means where there is internal carotid artery directly draining into the cavernous sinus there because it is mainly occurring 75% of the cases are occurring due to trauma and trauma can lead to the optic nerve involvement you can have have the sudden vision effect in indirect ones we can have the gradual or the insidious involvement of the visual acuity but again the vision involvement will give you a clue towards the fistula which is not found in cases of the cavernous sinus thrombosis can we see some photos of because nowadays we are getting clinical pictures also yes, so can we see some clinical photos of the patient uh, who presented with the keratoco cavernous fistula yes so if you see here the first one you can see the dilated veins here which is very commonly seen due to the increase in the apiscleral venous pressure then the second one the second one can you see there is redness congestion because obviously the signs of congestion will be present everywhere because there is an increase in the venous pressure so you are getting the venous congestion everywhere right from the veins here especially in the direct ones which are usually the high flow fistulas and then the third one shows you the hemorrhagic chemosis see chemosis you can find at many places but hemorrhagic chemosis is again found only in cases of this fistula keratoco cavernous fistula so if you see a figure where you have got increased episcleral venous pressure if you have chemosis especially along with the hemorrhage that's a definite clue that you are having this fistula keratoco cavernous fistula now i will um, so now when we have discussed so much about it but ultimately the diagnosis will depend upon the radiological findings so i will request dr rajat to throw some light so that we can confirm our findings and whether or not we are thinking in the right direction so dr rajat now ball is yeah. in your so court so what i feel is that uh, so most of the time when a when an ophthalmologist has given us this much information we already we are already know that that that's a keratoco cavernous fistula and in fact that is what i'll tell you friends that it is not like surgery or in the medicine where uh, the the diagnosis is totally dependent on the radiological information like our personal experiences like in ophthalmology we call our ophthalmological colleague and ask that what do you think is the diagnosis and 99% of the time what they are saying is the diagnosis okay. but because we are living in an evidence based medicine so you, they just want a, a, a evidence based confirmation or a radiological image based confirmation so that they can start on to the uh, a surgical or a definitive management on that particular patient okay so as as she rightly said that what is happening if you look at the pathology that is happening it's a, it's a fistulous communication between an internal carotid artery and a cavernous sinus okay so ultimately there is a big pressure difference between an internal carotid artery and a cavernous sinus now this fistulous communication could be a direct communication when the internal carotid artery is directly communicating with the cavernous sinus or this might be an indirect communication when it is through a branch vessel they are getting communicating so what is basically happening is the arterial pressure is getting directly transmitted through the venous sinuses and as a result of which the venous pressure increases now once this venous pressure increases all the draining channels of the cavernous sinus becomes dilated and one of an important tributary as you can say is that a superior ophthalmic vein so the dilatation of a superior ophthalmic vein is a very very important sign that we are picking up on a radiological investigation that there is an increase in the pressure that is happening okay but the second important point is this dilatation could be because of a cavernous sinus thrombosis also okay because ultimately the veins are not able to drain but the moment i see dilatation of a superior ophthalmic vein that is definitely an abnormal finding that we as a radiologist are picking up and that is why usually we prefer to perform a contrast analysis scan because if there is a thrombosis of a cavernous sinus the sinus will not show any enhancement sinus is a pool of blood if i will do a contrast enhance scan if it's a fistula the sinus will show intense enhancement but if it's a thrombosis there will not be any enhancement in the sinus because thrombosis will not enhance okay angiography can also be done in the angiography you can directly see the fistulous communication so let us see some images and let us try to see whether we are able to appreciate it or not okay so these are the two images as you could see now these are the transverse section of the brain and if you see this this is the transverse section of the brain where you could see that the superior ophthalmic vein is getting dilated whereas in this particular image as you could see 
in the orbit, you could see the dilated superior thalamic vein. Now, which is a pretty higher section above the orbit. The moment you see this finding, immediately it should come to your mind that yes, there is something abnormal that is happening to the main part, which is cavernous sinus. Okay. If I do the angiography, which is a which is a non-invasive angiography, as you could see, the, the, the MR angiography images here, you could see that there are abnormal tortuous vessels that you could see in the region of the right cavernous sinus along with the dilated vessel, which is again a definitive sign of a keratococavernous fistula. Please remember, somebody asked me the preferred investigation, I will say a contrast enhanced MR is sufficient to make a diagnosis of a keratococavernous fistula, but direct visualization of the fistula is done on angiography, okay? on angiography. So, investigation of choice and gold standard remains the same here? I will say that see gold standard when I talk about that it, they are always invasive test. Yes. So, if somebody asks me gold standard I will say that put a put a catheter into the internal carotid artery, inject the dye and look for the direct filling of the cavernous sinus. Yes. That, that becomes a gold standard which is an angiography. Yeah. But an uh, investigation of choice is usually a non-invasive investigation where I am you are suspecting that's a pulsatile exophthalmos. Yes. You just want to confirm your diagnosis. So, I will just put a MR, a contrast enhanced MR, and I'll say, Yes, Dr. Neha, this is a keratococavernous fistula. fistula. Then, depending on the circumstances, you will choose a treatment option for, for that particular patient. Now, let us see what do you think. Like, let's we have diagnosed it's a keratococavernous fistula. So, what are the treatment options that you have for this patient? Yes, uh, thanks for explaining. So, uh, uh, intensively. First of all, I would try to see whether it's a direct fistula or it's an indirect fistula. So, you will help us to know whether it's a direct fistula or it's an indirect fistula because the treatment regimen is usually different because direct fistulas are usually the high pressure fistulas and there you have to maintain the potency of the internal carotid artery that is very important. While you are occluding the internal carotid artery communication, most of the times what is the problem that you may end up in occluding the internal carotid artery itself. So, you have to do certain procedures so that you maintain the potency. In the low pressures, the indirect ones, yes, you have to just occlude the tear which is between the branches and as well as the cavernous sinus. So, we can take the trans arterial approaches as well as the trans venous approaches. The trans arterial approaches are usually preferred in the direct ones while we prefer the trans venous approaches in cases of the indirect ones. All right, Dr. Neha. So, that means uh, that the treatment is primarily surgical Thanks. if you if you have in this particular case. Okay, so friends, so please remember um, as the take home message that keratococavernous fistula you gonna consider when PCB is given in the choice. Pulsatile proptosis, chemosis and brew. And the brew. Okay. Yes. The preferred investigation is MR, contrast enhanced MR. Gold standard when you want to see the exact site of fistula, the gold standard is a direct angiography, okay, direct angiography, which is a gold standard. Now, this image that you could see is a MR angiography, as you could see both the vessels, okay. So, please remember, that's a very important point, specifically for the neat paper also, that if you are seeing both the vessel, both the internal carotid artery, it cannot be a catheter angiography, because you can't see both the vessels. Whereas, if you see this image, as you could see this image, what is happening in these images is, you are seeing only one internal carotid artery. That means you are directly entering into that particular vessel and injecting the dye. Okay. Another interesting catch here is a catheter angiography in the exam or in the practical life is usually shown with a black color, whereas a CT or an MR angiographies are usually shown with a white color. Okay. So sometimes students are confused in identifying that whether it's an MR angiography, CT angiography, which are non-invasive, or a catheter angiography. So if you this kind of image, this is a non-invasive NGO where you are directly injecting a dye in a vein and you can see both the vessels. Whereas, if you see this vessel, this is a DSA or a digital subtraction angiography or a catheter angiography. Okay. So, these are the important points about the keratococavernous fistula as a part of our integrated series. For more such videos, like our channel, DBMCI YouTube channel and keep watching them. They will be very useful in your preparation. Thank you, Dr. Rajat. Thank you. Thanks for watching, guys.